<laughs> the old strategy is asking people. What is uh, it? Yeah, but you can't ask them what are you willing to pay. That doesn't work. Yeah. So <laughs> what questions do you need to ask people to, to get to that answer? Because, yeah, as you say, if I ask you, what are you willing to pay? They're probably going to say something pretty low. <laughs> yes, they will. Um, and... and um, but but price um, price is interesting because it it it's there's something called expectation bias, mm -hmm. and expectation bias uh, was identified by uh, by the we have um, really the the uh, the the uh, a guy called uh, Torsten Veblen uh, back in the um, late nineteenth century. And um, he he was a uh, an American, one of the leading intellectuals. He was of Norwegian descent, and and he came up with um, uh, something that he called the um, uh, the I think he called it the law of business uh, equilibrium or something like that, um, which essentially means that um, you get what you pay for. <laughs> and okay, uh, very simple and, explanation. No, but this, this is in, this is interesting actually because um, the 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 result of this is expectation bias, and <clears throat> what I mean with that is that um, the um, when you see the price of a product or service that you're about to buy, um, the price itself sets an expectation of of the benefits and the quality, and if the price is too low, we won't buy it, right? Because the price itself sets an expectation of inferior quality, so um, <clears throat> um, so that's one side of of expectation bias. That that the the um, um, if the price is too low, you won't get the sale, um, and the lower the price, the the, the lower the sales volume. Um, the other side of expectation bias is. Um, if you if you paid good money for whatever you bought, uh, you become a happier customer, um, and and in fact it it's been done many. This is an experiment that been done many many times, um, and um, a five cent aspirin is not very effective in curing your headache, whereas a fifty cent aspirin is right. <laughs> hmm, isn't it the same aspirin? <laughs> The same aspirin, you know, and 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 the price also. Um, I mean, other uh, um, the price also selects your customers, mm -hmm. and if you have very low prices, you attract um, price sensitive customers, and price sensitive customers are typically not the ones you want um, because because they're so. They're not really vested in your product or your service. Um, they um, they rarely uh, they rarely really they don't read the manual if there is one, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So instead, they clog up your um, your your customer support uh, cost and uh, sorry your customer support um, uh, department and so forth. And and you invest a lot of money in the into these price sensitive customers and as soon as there is an alternative that's just a little bit cheaper they're gone you know so okay so too low a price too low gives you the wrong customers and um the wrong expectations yes correct what about yeah. the other end is there too high price well obviously oh. if, <laughs> if if your price too high um, there, there's going to be an, an ever decreasing number of, of potential customers who, who who are willing to pay that. But this is something um, you mentioned that the the audience to this podcast is is small companies, and and um, one way a small company can actually understand what um, um, what price range they should be in um, is is the following and. Um, what what I recommend, you know, small companies, solopreneurs, and so forth to do, is um, is to go out and find twenty five potential clients. Mm -hmm. This is not going to be your current clients. It is not going to be your pro prospects. It is definitely not going to be friends and family and stuff like that. Um, but you find twenty five of those, 
Now, if you can't find 25, then you've got bigger problems to pricing. <laughs> then you need to right? look for a different product. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then you ask them to these people, first you describe your product or your service and the specific benefits that, that it has. And, and, and then you ask two questions. And phraseology here is very important. Um, <clears throat> you, you, you know, the first question is simply, now, when you understand my product or service and the benefits, what is the price that is just a little too low? So you think we're going to um, overpromise and underdeliver, and because of that, you won't buy it, right? And then you continue and say, and then look at the flip side, that instead we are going to um, underpromise and overdeliver. What is the price that's just a little too high for you to afford it, considering all the benefits of this product or service will give you? Then you take the average of those two points, and suddenly you have the range of prices you should be at. Right? Okay. Not below that and not over that. And obviously, you want to set the price towards the higher end. 